Hi, my name is Pulekeho, and today we'll be discussing our project, Robot World, along with me, Mbelu, Kudani, and Susan. We'll be going through a quick overview of the game, what it is about, and the requirements that we used in building it. We'll also take a deep dive into the code base and all the testing strategies that we use for the quality assurance. Okay, let's begin with an overview. So what is Robot World? Robot World is a multiplayer game built using Java where players can select their own robot from a list of available models. So how do we work together to make this game? Well, during our development phase, we followed a scrum methodology to manage the project. That's correct. We had daily stand-ups, sprint meetings, and even retrospectives for each sprint. Yeah, we also had to use a DevOps approach that involved us building your, our own CI pipeline using GitLab DevOps to both minimize potential technologies conflicts and automate our testing suits. Okay, now let's move on into software architecture. In order for us to explain the architecture, we have decided to split the project into three areas. The WebSocket layer, the HTTP API layer, and last but most importantly, the, co the database layer. We built the WebSocket layer to allow for real-time communication with the game server. A thread manager was built in the game server to support real-time concurrent connections, allowing multiple users to log in and play our game simultaneously. So next is the HTTP API layer. The HTTP layer was used to support third party connections to the game via an HTTP Javelin server. This would allow anyone to freely access the game and customize the layout of the game built on their preferences. Now, let's move on to our next topic databases. To prevent data loss, data corruption, and to support concurrent transactions, we used SQLite to create and manage our database, which was connected to the game via JWC driver for persistent storage. We chose a relational database as opposed to a NoSQL database such as MongoDB due to its ACID compliance and ability to make complex queries in a database schema employing multiple tables, as opposed to a NoSQL database which has no set schema and is normally used for big data analytics. The database consists of three main entities. The world entity used to store all game worlds. The objects entity used to store all game objects such as obstacles, pits, and mines. And finally, the world objects entity, which acts as a composite entity used to link the two together for a normalized database schema. Okay, let's move on to our final topic, quality assurance. We built three main testing suits, the HTTP API test, the game test, and the database test. For the game testing section, we had to build a lot of unit tests. We also had to construct a few acceptance tests to comply with the end user requirements issued to us for the game. Examples of these requirements include launching a robot in a world with and without obstacles, launching multiple robots in the same world, ensuring all robots have a unique name, and allowing multiple robots to detect each other in the same world. To test these requirements, we built four simulated game servers capable of simulating these worlds for both 1 to 1 and 2 to 2 worlds. For all the requirements to be met, 
we ended up having to code a mocked client class used for simulating user inputs to the simulated game server. We also built a process manager class, which was responsible for running multiple servers simultaneously for both easy and efficient memory management. The below class is responsible for running the whole acceptance test suite. As you can see, all tests are passing. Okay, now we're gonna give you a live view of our code base. Okay, so we used GitLab as the platform to host our repository. These are all the dependencies that we used to run the Robot World game. Uh, below is the documentation containing details such as what Robot World is. Robot World is a multiplayer game powered using Java, the requirements needed to run the game, installation guide, such as running uh, your your Java jar your the, the game server, um, all the different operations in order to build your own custom world, su such as defining the size of your world, your obstacles, uh, the game server manual used to start the game, and in order to run all the different commands after you've successfully run the game server, the client manual containing all the client um, commands that you can execute once you successfully run the client application, all the different robot models that can be used uh, in conjunction with the launch command, all the different commands such as forward, left, right, fire, look, state, the software architecture, which pretty much is a model of the our repository. Um, so each part has its own unique operation. Uh, this is a concept we call separation of concerns. Um, it's also used in solid uh, programming. Um, and details, there's further details if you'd like to know. Uh, the database design, this is the data model we employed. We have two entities joined together, the world entity and the object entity joined together by the game object entity uh, and the table. And below that would be all the quality assurance related topics. Okay, so let's take a deep dive into the, the code. So as you can see, each folder has its own unique functions. For example, the client side uh, folder is used to contain all the client side applications. The database folder would contain all the database application related topics. Um, the game server contains the game server code. The utilities folder contains any type of methods that are, you know, shared between all these different folders in order to reduce redundancies and, you know, just for a cleaner code base. Um, the world entity is used to contain all world object related topics such as your obstacles, your pits, your minds, um, the classes that define the world. They're all stored in the world entity. Okay, let's take a deep dive into the game server. So the game server comprises of the game server class which contains the UI of the game server and all the code needed to run the the game server. So the game server connects to the client via web sockets. And because of this, and due to the fact that the, this is a multiplayer game, concurrency becomes an issue. And due to concurrency, um, different classes were created, such as the server listener, which is used to manage threads, and the client handler, which is used to um, contain the logic of the thread, the thread being responsible for managing the client um, and delivering commands to the game uh, class. So the game class is the most important class. It contains all, all the logic used to manage the, the whole game, such as keeping track of all the robots, uh, their positions, all the, the worlds, etc. Okay, cool. Let's take a deep dive into the uh, the client side uh, folder. So this is the client application which has client side scripts. 
uh, it connects to the database, as I said, via WebSockets. Uh, you've got your buffer readers and your buffer writers used to send and receive commands from the server or to the server. Uh, this is used to initialize the server, run the server, and here we would get the main executable section of the uh, of the client side application. Okay, so now you've seen that section. Let me dive you deep into the database. Okay, let's go to the database. Okay, so where's the database? So this is the database, and this is the data access. Uh, this is the data access class used to contain all the database logic, used to connect to the, the, the SQLite database. So here we use, uh, we're using a JW, we're using the JDBC uh, driver in order to connect to our SQLite database. Uh, we define the class for names. Um, we also define a general path. So why do we have to define a general path in order to connect to our database? This is because we wanted our we wanted our game to be able to run on multiple different computers. If we just uh, hard coded the the path to the database, it would have given us an error if we used another person's database because they might have different paths. They might have different file paths. So below that, you would get all your CRUD operations uh, linked to the data the database class. So You'd get the uh, get world ID needed to get the world ID from the from the table uh, with all its corresponding documentation. Get all worlds saved in the game. Uh, the SQL light the SQL uh, commands uh, the SQL light command in order to interact with the database. Uh, what else is there? Get the objects, get the object ID used for referencing the types of objects, get object ID. So there's, there's all these different documentations that can help us in order to understand the logic of these different methods, such as the game, uh, get game objects. So judging from this uh, method, this method is actually used to get all the game objects associated with the world. So you'd input the, the world name and you'd get a list of all game objects. And it uses uh, inner joins in order to accomplish this. Uh, so I'm guessing this is the logic, uh, this is the, this is where the, the composite entity is involved, the game object. So let me show you again what I'm, what I'm referring to. Uh, when it comes to the composite entity. So basically, we're using an inner join because there are two different types of entities. There are two different types of entities that are used in this in this database. And they're all linked together by uh, a composite entity. So uh, here it is. So this is the... This is the data model, right? So there's the world composite entity. The, I mean, there's the not composite entity. There's the world entity and there's the object entity, and they both exist. They both, um, you know, they both exist in the game objects entity. So in order to get the data, in order to get like the data such as world name and object size or object names, we use inner joins to help you know, gather all that detail together in the game objects entity. Uh, so we did this in order to normalize the whole database schema and yeah. Okay, let's just move on quickly. Let me just click back, let's see what we can do. So basically we're using inner joints just to um, get data, to collect data from um, the multiple um, the 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 other ob the other entities related to the composite entity via using its uh, the its primary key. Well, that would be so it would be a foreign key for the composite entity. Okay, let's just move on because we're running out of time. Okay, so that's all your uh, 
create that's all your get operations let's go to your create uh, operation so we can add a new data world we can add a new world to the database the documentation is below we're using insert functions uh, we can add world maps specify all the game objects associated with the world this is very good because um, I like how simplistic the logic is so the, the method basically helps abstract away a lot of all the boilerplate code associated with doing all these operations and we also have a close operation in order to shut down the data, the, the data connection, the database connection. This is good for saving up memory. We also have the delete data uh, to database. So we have an operation called delete world map. And if I'm correct, this operation is used to delete a world map from the database. So this is very helpful when it comes to our uh, testing process uh, for the database. So Whenever we try to test the functionality of the data access class, we normally have to refresh it. So in order to refresh it to its original state, we'd normally, after creating a world, we delete the world. So that every single time we run it, the data access class is always fresh and we can continuously test the data access class for its functionality. Okay, so that, that's actually a quick overview of our code base. Now we move on to the HTTP API test. For us to verify the functioning of our HTTP API endpoints, we used an extreme external library called Apache HTTP client, where we simulated a client request and verified the responses using assertion methods in the test cases. At first, we struggled, but after a few days, we successfully ran the tests and received a positive outcome. To finally wrap things up, we will be looking at our database tests. For us to test the database, we use the CRUD operations against a mock database verifying that all the methods found in the database class our access class were functional. To wrap things up, I will show you all the tests in action and that will conclude the end of our presentation.